Good morning, all. Uh, I would like to thank the AIR Scientific Committee for giving me the opportunity to speak here in the IC course, Dr. Jatin, for uh, in including me in this IC uh, on a topic which is uh, an intriguing topic, especially when it uh, refuses to heal. So, uh, if we go by the definition of what a persistent epithelial defect is, it's something which means that the epithelial defect refuses to close. Uh, heal within the first 10 to 14 days after the trauma. What, whether the trauma is because of a mechanical cause, inflammatory cause, or some epithelial basement membrane issues, if it doesn't seal off in the next 10 to 14 days, it has to be labeled as PD. And that's where the real challenge starts. Uh, Dr. Geeta happened to explain the pathophysiology of epithelial defect. It's basically an interplay between pro-inflammatory uh, markers and the healing uh, process. Uh, whoever takes the upper hand uh, will land up causing you the situation and will take you to those stages. So if the pro-inflammatory markers are high, uh, it reduces the chance of epithelial healing. Whereas if you introduce certain things or allow uh, the healing markers to survive or flourish, you tend to see a healing epithelial defect. Dr. Geeta has already discussed the etiologies. Uh, to me, I feel that uh, there are certain etiologies which are manageable, treatable, which if overlooked uh, can help, uh, you know, can mess up the situation. So certain treatable, manageable uh, etiologies, if looked into and managed in time, the probability of developing a PED uh, would be lesser. But there are certain conditions like a congenital corneal anesthesia, congenital limbal stem cell deficiencies, patients with recurrent erosion syndromes, uh, Patients who have an underlying neurotrophia, which could be because of a neurological cause or some, some other reason which has affected the trigeminal nerve uh, innovation, can be the toughest to treat uh, in terms of persistent epithelial defects. Whereas most of the other ones, uh, inflammatory, mechanical causes, uh, limbal stem cell to a certain extent, these we know as surgeons, ophthalmic surgeons, I believe we know we can tackle them and try and uh, hasten or assist the healing of a persistent epithelial defect. The ones that really ha I feel have always been troublesome are the ones which are based on the cause of neurotrophia. So uh, these are the stages that an epithelial persistent epithelial defect goes through. As I said in the beginning, there's an interplay between the pro-inflammatory markers and the healing markers. Any tip off towards the pro-inflammatory will cause a PED. The three stages that we normally see of neurotrophia are basically one where there is shedding of the epithelial cells in the form of erosions. A mild stromal subepithelial sub-basement membrane scarring could be seen and a very bad tear film. Uh, when this persists, this is when we land up having a PED. Third thing, obviously, stage 3 would be one where the PED starts getting infected. There is stromal lysis, there could be necrolysis and complications. That would be the stage 3 of this situation. So as I said, uh, when you suspect a PD, when you see a PD, you should suspect neurotrophia or neurotrophic keratitis. Look for the sensations both in the normal area and the affected area. If the sensations are normal, unlikely that this was neurotrophic. Because as I said, neurotrophic keratitis would be the ones which would be difficult to treat if they are the responsible factors for PED. Um, what has been noticed is that as I said, there are going to be associated ocular surface disorders or problems which can be treated, managed. They need to be addressed first. In spite of that, there is a PD. Then we have a stage-wise approach. Uh, I'll go through each of them separately. Stage 1 is the way where you have erosions, you have neurotrophia, and you want to remove all the preservatives from your topical medications. The best way here is to treat with preservative-free lubricants, uh, both in the form of drops and gels uh, doesn't work and you still land up having a large PED which is not responding to the medical treatment there are other medical options which I'll discuss and when all this fails then uh, we need to call in Dr. Jatin for his surgical management so as I said treat the underlying correctable disorders which so avoid NSAIDs, lid abnormalities, systemic comorbidities if patients have systemic conditions which lead to secondary Sjogren's and all, see to it that the systemic inflammation has come down with assistance from a physician. LSCDs can be managed surgically, providing the appropriate nutrients for re-epithelization. So basically, 
uh, epithelial growth factors, um, platelet derived growth factors. These are all new options that we know are have been healing aspects for epithelialization. But uh, we have a very limited source of these. Um, as I said, free preservative free lubricants, auto serum in the form of either 20% or 50% can be used. Re currently available in the market is a recombinant human nerve growth factor. Pretty expensive, it's called Oxivirate. Uh, can try insulin drops. The other ones uh, are more of clinical trial based or research based molecules rather than uh, practice based molecules. So what options that we can try as a step up is first try preservative free lubricants avoid NSAIDs avoid preservatives in your medications auto serum drops is possible to make a cumbersome job uh, need to draw a lot of blood get it centrifuge can't use it beyond 24 hours to 48 hours have to be refrigerated high risk of contamination all sorts of things adding a topical azithromycin or an oral doxycycline or mucomix or n cysteine helps um, reduce the MMPs, reduce the pro-inflammatory cytokines and therefore assist in healing. They are not basically a treatment but they are assistance to allow epithelialization. One of the papers that I happened to come across suggested using topical insulin one unit per ml. The standard humulin S insulin can be mixed with lubricants and can be tried. There have been very convincing results. Uh, personally, I haven't tried. Uh, the other ones which are not available in India are available, FDA approved are uh, RGTAs, uh, recombinant human nerve growth factor, Senegermin, which is also called as Oxervate, uh, out of bounds for Indian population, $25,000 per bottle, used to be used four to six times in a day, pretty expensive affair. Thymosin is another molecule available in US but predominantly used only during clinical trials, not for practice. So take home message would be treat the treatable factors, manage the treatable factors of neurotrophia, avoid toxic topical therapies, treatments, preservative included. Trial of medical treatment is a must before you say that this is not going to respond. And my personal experience, it's always been the surgical thing that has saved us through this PED. Uh, so I think Jatin would highlight the thing that we do to get out of this nasty situation. Thank you. Okay, okay. No, because he's not there. Okay, okay. Good morning, uh, Dr. Sabir Kaushal, our colleague, uh, for some personal reasons, could not make it to the IC and he's requested me uh, to speak on his behalf for the presentation topic is novel and newer treatments for persistent epithelial defect. Um, there's a battery of new drugs that are available in the market. Um, my previous slide in my presentation, I happened to show certain things that are available in India, certain things that are not available in India. But for academic point of view, for interest point of view, it's essential for you us to know what are things that are available as treatment. So there's a huge list of it, tropical fibronectin, thymosin beta, four fibronectin derived peptides, nexagon, epithelial growth factors, insulin-like growth factors, topical insulin, human growth hormone, albumin eye drops, RGTAs, amniotic membrane extracts, uh, Senegermin, and corneal neurotization. So these uh, are there in the market. Fibronectin is a glycoprotein vital in cellular adhesion in the extracellular matrix. So it helps the epithelial cell bind to the basement membrane. Uh, available, it's there in our blood, it's prepared through the auto serum, but uh, commercially, it's not so easily available. Thymosin beta, as I had said, that uh, promotes angiogenesis, so helps uh, healing very fast, um, has a little bit of metastatic potential, but obviously the doses that we use uh, does not land up causing any problems at the limbal stem cell level. Uh, helps downregulate most of the inflammatory markers and promotes epithelialization. 
Nexagon, also called as antisense oligodeoxynucleotide, it downregulates connexin 43, which is, is considered to be an expressed marker in terms of a pathological ocular surface situation. So, commonly they have said that you can use this in patients who have had ocular burns, chemical or thermal, and helps to recover from this. It also helps to reduce the inflammation and edema associated with such trauma. Epithelial growth factor is a direct uh, implication of allowing epidermal or epithelial growth. So this uh, helps both proliferation, migration and helps in assisting. Again, these are predominantly been done as clinical trials. These molecules are available for clinical trials, not as commercial use for practice. Insulin-like growth factor and insulin, both as I mentioned, uh, are an amazing concept that can be used uh, have been used quite extensively in the Western world uh, using insulin like growth factors and pure human insulin again to treat patients more so with diabetic epitheliopathies. Human growth factor difficult to extract, very small amounts, uh, very expensive, but very uh, ambiguous results in this. There are some patient papers which suggest that yes, they are effective. Some people say they don't work much. So not really a great molecule to be discussed. Albumin eye drops, we all know our serum, auto serum has these and they, autologous serum has these components and albumin seems to be helpful in treating ocular surface disorders. RGTA, as I said, uh, not available here, it's available in France, uh, they've been using it, it's also available in US. Uh, it helps, it's, it's like creating a base for the epithelium to adhere, so the heparin sulfate is getting replaced of the basement membrane with new um, extracellular matrix and proteins through the, these molecules. Amniotic membrane extracts, we know amniotic membrane is a great healer in uh, dire situations of ocular surface disorders and um, the extracts have been used as drops in some situation. Corneal neurotization is a new thing, um, it's, it's, it's like corneal nerve transplants uh, using supravital or supratrochial nerves of the op contralateral side. Uh, or can even do a sural nerve transplant to get uh, the neurotrophia out of it. Uh, Senner Germin or Observate, super expensive, $25,000 for a bottle, four times a day, uh, out of reach for current Indian population, and um, but has, has very promising results. Um, one of the talks by Dr. Dua also has asserted the use of this molecule. Scleral contact lenses, a brilliant option. We've had great results in these, uh, with this in especially severe Steven Johnson syndrome patients where uh, you didn't want to do a surgical rehab and we've bought time by using scleral contact lenses.